Welcome to Global Pillar Ministry, a platform that exists to bring believers back to their Bibles and prepare them to become efficient in the Kingdom of God. Join me as I welcome your host, Dr. Levin Damisa. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you tonight. As we look into your world again, teach us, open our eyes, to great virtues, your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. We began this discussion last Saturday. We will look at and give the power of fasting and prayer as the hearing power of fasting. Now, we we'll just touch a little. Today, we we'll go a little deeper. The, the, the idea behind this is to help believers and those who may want to use the opportunity of the new year. I know that different countries have different new years. Different culture have different calendar that they use. So this may not be your own new year, but globally, January 1st is taken as new year using the Gregorian calendar. And so many persons, it's a time to reboot. It's a time to, to examine your financial record, your financial dealings, your business dealings, your life goals, opportunities, loss, those taken advantage of. You know, so it's, it's an apple time, so we cannot wish it away that January, February is not important in the life of people. So people are engaged in fasting prayer because they want the best. But sometimes people fast year in, year out, and they don't get result. It's painful. It's like a scandal in the body of Christ to have an unanswered prayer. Because the will of God, the desire of God is to say, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. So when Christ was discussing the concept of risk of asking to the disciples, which applies to us, Christ didn't have in mind unanswered prayer. You can take that to the bank. That Christ didn't have unanswered prayer in mind when he was discussing the concept of fasting and prayer. Because to him, a child of God that ask will receive. It was not James, Apostle James said, you ask and receive not because you ask and miss. So asking ought to come with receiving. But when we ask and we don't receive, Apostle James says, it's because we ask and miss that we may consume it on our own lust. And meaning that a believer who is asking out of lust is no longer in the center of the will of God. A believer who is asking and me is already pursuing a different agenda than the agenda of God and heaven for his life. And so, intentional fast, engaging the power of fast, bring result. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at the book of, so that you understand, that the New Testament believers fast. The church prayed, the believers prayed, and miracles happened. Things happened. Now, you need to understand something, that when God says, ask and you shall receive, before I go to that scripture, it means that he already has a mind to do it. How do we know? He said, which of you will give this child a snake when he asks for a fish? Which of you will give a stone when he asks for bread? So God's intention is that your prayer this year will be answered. And I speak that heaven shall respond to your cry in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we look at the scripture that in Isaiah chapter 58 again, the purpose of fast. The purpose of fast in where we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 58. I'll start from there tonight. Isaiah 58, verse 1. It says, Cry aloud, spear not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice they did in approaching God. Why have we fasted and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our soul and you have and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. 
Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and strive for the feast of wickedness and to strike with the feast of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on air. Is it a fast that I've chosen? Now God was trying to get the attention. So the purpose of fast, one, is to get God's attention. It, it's, it's strange because, like I said last week, God is omniscient. So what are you fasting for God? Why are you fasting to get God's attention? The reason is that God wants you to be part. God wants you to have what called co-dominance. He wants you to be part of the domination. He wants you to have dominion. He wants you to share in the dominion of God because I say you are God. God wants you to, to manifest a grace that is given to all those. But we say, for we have been made partakers of the Christ, we have been made partakers of the divine nature of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the purpose of fast could just be one to get God's attention. Now, and they are trying to get God's attention, but they were not doing it rightly. And God has to draw their attention because they are fasting. It's God that said, This is not what I want. In the day of your fast, you exert all labors, you exploit your laborers, you, exploit, you, you indulge in pleasures, and you call it a fast. So that means fasting should have impact, fasting should have result. So why do we fast? We can fast to also tell God we mean business. Until you leave your comfort zone, the comforter will not take you to the next level. So fasting can be done to indicate that God, I mean business. This thing, I need it. And fasting helps you to see, your, to separate your mind and lust from spiritual intent. Your mind and lust from spiritual purposeful driven ideas. Fasting keep your flesh, your Adamic nature in check for you to be a partaker. Fasting can be done to make God to change his mind. Some things are, irrevoc some things are irrevocable with God, but some things can be done. Fasting can change the mind of God in some things. The case of Ezekiah. So I'm just going to give you briefly that God and get people, when people fast, when people fast, God answers prayer. Let's look at 2 Kings 20 verse 1 about Ezekiah. In those days, Ezekiah was sick and near death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Say, then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and in loyal heart, and I have done what was good in your sight. He went bitterly. It happened. You see, prayer can engage God. He faced the war. He turned away from pleasure. He faced the war. He turned away from pleasure. He engaged God on one on one. And heavens opened. He got 15 years addition. God answers prayer when his children engage God in prayer. Elijah, the Bible says Elijah was a man of like passion. He fast and he prayed and heavens obeyed his word. Heaven carried out his word. But eventually you are looking of how can I get better this year? How can I be a better believer? I want to tell you, engage in the power of fasting and prayer. Not the routine fasting and prayer that people just do because we are doing it. No, God wants you to fast with result. Many a time we fast so that we can clarify on God's will. It's an indication of how serious we want to know. Many a time, like Daniel, but we say, Daniel say, I, sought, I, I fast to seek understanding. Many a time you can fast to seek understanding of what may appear difficult. Daniel chapter 9 verse 3. This is what it says here. He says, then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandment. Daniel wanted to have understanding of what was written down in, in, the, in the prophecy of prophet Jeremiah. Because it was deep, it was unclear to him, he engaged the force of prayer and fasting. In this year, as you go along, 
when you come across a difficult subject, when you come across something that look disturbing to you, I want to tell you tonight, as you engage in the power of fasting and prayer, there will be answer. There will be result. There will be an answer. God will speak to you. God will open your eyes to understanding. God will cause you to know what he wants you to know. Because the Bible says when Daniel prayed, he got understanding. When Daniel prayed, he understood the 70 weeks. He, 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 that means he went deeper into understanding God's mind for fasting. Now we can fast for power. We can fast for God continue blessing. Now when we say fast for power, it means that as a believer, God wants your blessing retained. God wants your blessings permanent. God wants your blessings long lasting. The power of fasting can be engaged to keep your blessings and to grow and to remain continually blessed. Out of Apostle 13, like I said earlier on in the first episode, that fasting is not an Old Testament thing. Fasting is, was also done in the New Testament. Look at it here. The Bible says, now in the church, this was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, my name, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tartar, and Saul. Verse 2 now. He said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. That means as they sing in worship and in fasting. That means again, you can actually fast and be worshiping God. You can be in a fasting and be just be singing praises to God. And I tell you, nothing moves the hand of God than worship and praising God. The Bible says, as they fasted, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit said what? Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So fasting can give you a commissioning into a new assignment. Fasting can be a commissioning point into a new calling that God has called you into. Hallelujah. Now, when you look at Art of Apostle again, Art of Apostle verse 14, verse 23, so when they had appointed elders in every church and pray with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So fasting can be used to keep you under the power of God, to keep you focused on the assignment that God has called you into. They fasted, they prayed, they have appointed leaders in the church, they prayed for them and they fasted. So fasting is part of the New Testament believer. It keeps you in check, it keeps you in the place of power. Never you grow in grace to forsake the power of fasting. Never you tell yourself you've grown in grace and now fasting is no longer respected, is no longer needed. No, that would be a distraction. That would be a trap that the devil wants to use to, div to divert you from what God wants you to do in life. Praise the name of the Lord. Fasting gives power. The disciples want to know why they couldn't cast out the powerful demon. And they said, Master, why couldn't we do this? Christ said, this one does not happen except with fasting and prayer. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. He says here, he says, Christ was telling them, verse 28 now, say, and when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? Why was it difficult for us to cast that demon in that boy out? We have seen you done before. We want to do it the same way you are doing it, but what happened? What was the difference? The Bible says, Christ said to them, this kind come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. That means there's some demonic oppression, demonic manifestation, manipulation that cannot be broken except you bring in the power of fasting and prayer. This year, I want to assure you by the Spirit of the living God that as you engage in fasting and prayer, satanic strongholds have been dislodged in the name of Jesus because God has guaranteed that. God has promised that. His word is yea and amen. He said, ask and you shall receive. Whatever stronghold, whatever bondage, whatever stagnation, whatever the enemy has used to oppress your life, engage in prayer. You see, God wants you to experience power. 
God wants every believer to show forth his power in, in, in any way we go to. Anywhere you find yourself, God wants to show off with you. Let me use that word. Prayer and fasting position you. Now, people of old, in our own time, generation, God's generals, they spend time in prayer. People like E.M. Bounce. People like Smith Wigglesworth. People like Pray Hyde. People like John Knox. People, they spend time in prayers and they got unusual result. And if we must get unusual result in our time, we must engage the power of prayer again. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Now, now what are some caution? So that we do not waste the effort of fasting and we turn around to, to, to blame God. These are basic earth tips. You may not find them in the Bible, but I can tell you that the idea of believers fasting is not to punish yourself and to make yourself accept. It's not a penance. Fasting is never a penance. Fasting is not for you to gain acceptance, no. It's to deprive yourself of pleasure to engage with God without distraction. That is the basic idea behind fasting. So that when you consecrate yourself into a life of fasting, some people have fasted and at the point of breaking, they eat food and they die. It shouldn't be. It's not the will of God for you to fast and die. No. Now fasting, especially the fasting early in the year, in January, February, the weather, the weather is very dry. Don't fast without drinking plenty of liquid. Some people will say dry fast. In dry fasting, you expect to still take water. It's very important. Your body needs fluids. When the body fluid is dehydrated, your blood volume can be affected. And if, you, if, if, if it's a prolonged fast without water, your, there, there's a lot of poisons, chemicals accumulating in your body. Because you are fasting, your body protein is being broken down, your body fat is being broken down, and the body needs water to make urine to excrete those waste out. When you don't drink water, you put your kidneys under strong test, under pressure, and you may come down. So we encourage that when you are fasting, take water. Not that you're not to take water, you put sugar, then it means you're not really fasting, you're drinking coke. Take fluid, it is, it's very helpful. In some countries, people when they are fasting, they take hot coffee, depending on the climate. But for we here in the tropic, you don't need to put coffee or... Uh, no, no, no. But at least take water. It helps you. Except if it's supernatural fast. Now there is argument in theology if Moses fasting for 40 days was without water. If Jesus fasting for 40 days was without water. The Bible says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Those are supernatural fasts. Not everybody is called into supernatural fast. We have seen people engage in that because they want to prove a point, because they want to have certificate. Do you know I've fasted for 21 days without water? And then the results do not, are not commensurate with the encounter. We, be, we turn back to blame God. Why? Because the intention was wrong ab initial. That is not what God wants us to experience this year. You can say, Ezra ate no food and drink no water. These are us, these are for unspecified time. These are supernatural fast. Now, when you have heart problem, we encourage you not to fast. When we say heart, when we say heart problem, for example, if you are diabetic, if you are diabetic, sometimes we push ourselves out of faith, sometimes of presumption. You must be guided if you are diabetic not to fast. Me to fast, to engage on the person, especially prolonged fast. Because the way the body metabolism is, if you are diabetic and you don't take your drugs, your sugar control can go, uh, can go to a level that can be detrimental to your brain. People can come down with diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, from there into coma, from there into death. Like I said earlier on, it's not the will of God for you to fast and die. You are fasting for an encounter. And that encounter cannot be dead. So if you if you are if you have health issue, talk to your doctor, and they will guide you on when how to fast. Now, 
if you are and again don't be deceived by the euphoria of fasting two three day fasting i'm going no 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 no. fasting is a spiritual exercise fasting that does not take anything from you is not a correct fast Fasting must affect your behavior, must affect your meditation, must affect everything about your body. And fasting is good for your body anyway. I mentioned before, it helps toxins. Fasting, when you are fasting, you are also vulnerable. You know, the trap of fasting for a long time is that you may start counting on your self-righteousness. That is why I'm teaching them with a burden that you don't get trapped with the fasting, don't get trapped that you are doing prolonged fasting to prove a point. You don't do prolonged fast to prove a point. A point to who? To Holy Spirit or to Jesus. That is not a wrong, that is a wrong fast. It's not a fun, you may feel weak or even feel irritable. And the devil wants to play on your vulnerability during fast. So you need to be careful. Now, don't expect a lot to happen during fasting and prayer. Actually, the outcome of fasting is after the fast. Many people experience, some people, because they, they, some people enter fasting with wrong motive, they want to hear voices during fasting. You are hungry, you want to hear voices, I'm telling you, you will hear voices. And many people have heard demonic voices and the outcome globally has been very terrific. So when you are fasting, you may not experience any divine encounter that period. But the outcome is oftentimes long term. The Lord will guide us with all wisdom in the name of Jesus. You may feel God near, you may not feel him near, and you, the blessing will come later. If you are fasting and you have an encounter, praise God. If you have an encounter, don't force it. End your fast in faith. End your fast in love. The outcome will come after. Praise the name of the Lord. And now, yeah, as I begin to round up, never tell people if you are fasting alone. It's, uh, it's not their business to know you are fasting. If you are fasting, don't let the whole world know you are fasting. As a believer, as a Christian, as such as doing corporate fasting, which is announced everywhere. But to go to have a bath, today I'm fasting, don't talk to me. No, 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 no. That's a kind of mind. And beware of fasting prolonged beyond your capacity. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I tell you tonight that fasting is beneficial. It has health benefit. Fasting has healing benefit. And as you engage in this mystery, in this powerful mystery of Christianity, your life will never remain the same again. God bless you. This year, every fasting you do will come with supernatural blessing in the name of Jesus. Not necessarily spectacular. I say supernatural. I choose my words. Because the, the spectacular can be short-lasting, it can be deceptive. But if it's supernatural, it's long-lasting, it's more permanent, and it's life-transforming. New levels for every believer in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you because of your faithfulness. We bless you for your love for us as we engage in this mystery. This year, O oh God, Father, grant your true revelation. Grant us encounter. Grant us the depth, O oh God that life be transformed to a result to show for it this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. See you next Saturday. We shall be looking at something that God is in our heart. Keep a date with us. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's episode on The Word with Dr. Levin, presented by Global Pillar Ministry. Join us every Saturday for the undiluted teachings of the Word. You can watch previous and current episodes on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram channels. You can access the channel using the handle The Word with Levin. Please turn on notifications to join us every Saturday by 9 p.m. Listen to our audio messages on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts by simply searching for The Word with Levin. For inquiries, please call 0903-470-0607 or send an email to info at globalpillarministry.org or visit our website on www.globalpillarministry.org To support the Global Pillar Ministry, please send donations to GT Bank PLC account number 074-579-5640 God bless you. See you next week.